right, thank you again for checking me out. We're going to start with Chapter 5, Termination. We're going to give um, a different setup of this chapter. Apparently, this is a chapter I'm going to have to touch on a lot because it covers a lot of important uh, uh, HR concepts that we're going to have to uh, reference. So we're going to do an outline of this chapter. Okay. So, <clears throat> the first topic we're going to speak about is the Worker Adjustment and Retrain Act. The next topic we're going to speak about are employment handbooks and what they cover. We're going to look into the breach of contract and severance pay. So these are two separate uh, topics. We're going to talk about breach of contract and we're going to then cover severance pay. Next, we'll move into another act, the Model Employee Termination Act. We'll talk about the three public policy exceptions on why you can't be uh, fired. Then we will look into wrongful discharge, retaliatory discharge, constructive discharge, and how to contest termination. So, a lot of good content in there. So, the Workers Adjustment and Retraining Act. WARN requires employees with 100 or more employees to give 60 days notice of a substantial layoff for closing. Okay? So, you can't just have your employees show up one day and boom, you know, we are, we're closed. Um, this is something as an HR uh, professional I've encountered personally um, working through covid uh, I was working for a, <clears throat> it was a uh, chocolate production facility, and basically they, uh, under the recipe of a uh, parent company, created uh, luxury, delicious luxury uh, chocolates. Um, very big around Valentine's Day. They were very big for gifts. Um, they said their biggest customer were a lot of actually corporations. Um, interesting tidbit. Uh, but one of the big problems we faced were during COVID, a lot of people were out of work. Um, and that's something that was a big, uh, a lot of companies went under and it affected our, significantly affected our business model. But um, Warren protects employees from unforeseen, uh, I should say uh, things that they have seen. Um, that would cover conditions, acts of God, uh, maybe a natural disaster, something that you couldn't plan, that would be an exception. But everything else, you've got to give people notice. That's basically your Warren Act. Uh, also, in my comments, if I say anything, um, if it's something I'm stating is confusing, or if I don't state it or articulate it properly, or you want to bring something to my attention, uh, something I state kind of clumsily, Please let me know, and I'll go back, reference it, look it over, and fix it. Um, not sure sometimes on delivery, so I'm looking for feedback, communication. Got to get used to communicating, so this is always a good time to try. <clears throat> All right, so next we're going to look into employee, employment handbooks. So, employment handbooks, companies may state in handbook that employees won't be dismissed except for cause or layoff. Okay. If that's stated, the employer gives up the ability to terminate at will. So, if the employee handbook gives you an outline of the reasons why you will be terminated, um, whatever that may, may be, calling off too much, not coming in, problem after problem or whatever, fighting, drugs, they'll have a specific reason. If it's not for that reason, then this particular clause keeps them from uh, laying you off or firing you at will, rather. To preserve at-will termination, the handbook should clearly state employment is at will. Okay. So next we'll look into breach of contract and severance pay. Breach of contract. A breach of contract occurs when an employee's reasonable expectations under the contract have not been fulfilled. Breach of contract arise. 
when contract is set for a defined period of time, the employee is discharged without cause before that time. When employer specifies in an interview reasons an employee may be terminated, discharge is limited to those reasons. So if they tell you that these are the reasons why you'll be uh, terminated, they've got to stick to it and honor that legally. When employment handbook states cause for discharge, then employee employer will be bound to those. So that's basically what I just stated. Okay, next we'll look into severance pay. Severance pay may be given to the employer at the employer's discretion when an employee is discharged. Um, and it happens, you know, the, the amount varies depending on how long you've been with the company, your role with the company, um, how valuable you were, an asset obviously will determine how much you, severance pay you might be offered. The employee must be made aware of the ramifications and sign the severance pay, uh, the severance voluntarily. All right, next we're gonna look into the Model Employee Termination Act. Model Employment Termination Act. Ah, I made a mistake. That should be employment. Meta. Employer can only discharge an employee with cause. Advantage to the employer because it prevents litigation. And it's an advantage to employees because they can't be terminated at will. It's only been adopted in state law in, in Montana. So it's... it's been around, but uh, one state. But it seems like it's something good. We'll come back to that. We will talk about the three public policy exceptions now. Three public policy exceptions. Public policy exceptions to at-will employment may include whistleblowing, testifying, for, slash filing for a lawsuit, for discrimination harassment and or filing a workers compensation claim if an employee's termination falls under a public policy exception they may file a lawsuit for wrongful discharge retaliatory discharge or constructive discharge all right we're going to take a break right there uh we will resume with wrongful discharge in part two of employment law pearson collection by john j moran this is chapter five termination <laughs>